Hey, <clears throat> post-show rankings, um, a caveat here at the beginning. It's fucking hard. It's hard to rank everybody this year. I did it. I'm going to have fucking eight to one, right? Um, but I got to say this on the front end. Last year, because people didn't know I was ranking them, that was part of it, it was brand new, um, that it was very easy to ascertain. There were two or three that really shone. There was a group that kind of gave middling speeches, and then there were um, three that shit the bed. So it was easy to sort of rank and file them. Um, this year, everybody did a very, very solid job, and a couple people did a very, very good job. And even the one that I have at eight, um, did not do a bad job, and it was it mostly came down to delivery. Um, last year, I'll say this: the ones that wound up um, seven and six out of eight, for example, probably would have been fucking four or five or even three or four last year. That's the truth. The speeches this year, um, because people were prepared, um, people did not show signs of not knowing what they were talking about. People were organized in their thoughts and had very strong viewpoints. I will say that there was not one of these speeches that I agreed with 100%. Um, nonetheless, I found them very compelling viewpoints. And the audacity of some of them was refreshing. So let's just get into the fucking list. Number eight, uh, Ace Haven. Um, he talked about what they were doing at uh, Pro South, which is really interesting. His was the, the most kind of disjointed and the least organized and the least like a speech. It was more like him just talking about what they were doing at Pro South and why they were doing it and some of the effects. Uh, it wasn't incredibly effective. It's the kind of subject that would lend itself towards talking to him at length. He wants to come on to talk about Pro South more. We certainly want him to come on and do that. It was interesting, but uh, someone had to be last, and it's him. But I, I would say that he was better than the fucking bottom three or four last year, for sure. That was number eight. Number seven, Hold My Beer Hansen. Now, Hold My Beer Hansen and Proc the Croc both had pre-recorded ones. Again, they got their point across. It was really hard to disagree with what they were saying. Uh, Hold My Beer Hansen. Talking about the importance of the guys cutting promos, all incredibly valuable fucking information. The audacity, this guy hasn't been doing it all that long, and he fucking gets it. That's very clear, and he advocated for something incredibly well. Uh, I just found it less sort of compelling because he was talking about something that I think pretty much everybody could agree with. It's kind of like cutting a, cutting a speech about, you know... I think ice cream's delicious. It's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> so the n nothing bad about it. It was just a little less compelling than the others. But all the information that he gave was right on the money. And I love the bravery and the audacity that he'll fucking just come out and say it. It's fucking great. Uh, number uh, six, Proc the Croc. Very similar thing. Uh, Proc the Croc talked a lot about how guys who are in South Georgia need to wrestle up north. So if you're fucking great, um, in South Georgia, let's see you in different promotions. And uh, there are already a number of guys who tend to wrestle up in the north part of the state who kind of get down there. But uh, as I told Larry on Tipping Point, the real solution of this, well, South Georgia, the shows just aren't as good. And, you know, in the north, they tend to be better and all this kind of shit. Um, but you know, Drew Blood makes a really strong case. He's like, yeah, but the shows down south overall are really much more fun, and they're much more crowd savvy as far as interacting with the crowd. Something that Tommy Too Much talked about, how we don't do enough in the north. Well, the the key, uh, if you want to get rid of racism, everybody fucks everybody. <laughs> and uh, I think the more that we take away this invisible fucking barrier between South Georgia and every place else. As soon as we sort of remove that distinction, I think things get better overall. Um, though that will mean that if you're a South Georgia promotion, that means you're competing with everybody, not just your little in-group. That's the price. But then the benefit is I think the shows overall get better. I think everybody can take the good parts from each other. Uh, and hopefully push it from there. Next, Matt Griffin. Uh, unfair, totally, because he got cut off the first time, and then the second time, you just had to get it out, and it was really about promoting action wrestling, and, and really stating clearly, and he said this before, but it was nice to hear him state it clearly, which is, 
this is what we drew last year. We were in the 300s, and and he, without going into it in much detail, clearly he expects that to happen again or even more, which is sort of his bid of, we're fucking big time. Hard to argue. And, um, and also that they are interested in not being a Georgia promotion as much as part of considered the top indies in the country. And, and run their thing accordingly and have those kind of connections. Great. Um, that would be number uh, four. And again, any of these four, uh, I would say, especially these like seven through five, uh, any of these would have been a top half speech last year. Let me just say that one more time. All right, so now we're in the top four. Uh, James Caleb Kitchens. Uh, I was shocked. I said that he was either going to shit the bed or he was going to surprise me. He fucking surprised me. Um, it was very good. Unapologetically aggressive, which got us into a discussion post his speech about, is this a part of a new breed of promoter? That the whole, the old good old boy, get along, to get along, to get along kind of guys are giving the, giving way to guys like Gary Lamb or James Caleb Kitchens who are advocates for themselves and unapologetically so. And then we talked about the kind of the, the feuds and the fracases that they've got in with Bushido and PWX and whether that helped or hurt them and that kind of thing. But uh, this James Caleb Kitchens was the one that I liked the most out of all the incarnations that I've seen so far. Not that I'm saying that he's fake, but he was very focused and very unapologetic and unwavering in what he said. Thought a very effective speech and a really good advocate for uh, viral. He is number four. Um, number three, William Huckabee. Huck came on and did his fucking thing. Basically, his message was, Georgia wrestling, you're not as great as you think you are. You need to get back to being the fucking best around. Um, that was it in a nutshell. He certainly went into more detail than that. Very impassioned plea. Um, you need those guys, man. You need the guys who poke and prod and the guys who have different viewpoints. And I think this series of speeches was a great spread of different viewpoints. And Huck certainly has a fucking strong one. And his is, he's a Carolina guy, you know, and so he's a big believer in what we're doing in Georgia. And, uh, a lot of the boys listen to him. And after this speech, you can certainly see why, if you didn't know before. Number two, and I can't believe he's this high, Eric Walker. Um, his was just straight up smash mouth. Y'all need to fucking set goals and fucking go get them. But he said it in a way, and it was coming from a place of, fuck, I did it. I had a lot to learn, but I fucking learned it, and I'm making it happen for myself, but it's, I'm not doing anything that you can't do. And you need to do more, and you need to do more promos, and you need to do more blah, 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 blah. He covered what, like, three other guys covered in their promos, and he covered it all in his, in a very succinct fashion. Very effective. And not a guy's voice who you hear. Very compelling. He wants to come back on the show and talk more at length, and very happy after this speech to have him on number two number one fucking tommy pitts his fucking list he was organized as fuck his 11 things that promotions need to fucking do um the post discussion was also interesting but just focusing on his speech um his his big message is it's what the fan, you guys got to fucking interact with the fans and get out of this thing of wrestling for the boys. That was a theme in like two or three people's thing. And I think it's something that a lot of people still need to hear, which is you're not wrestling for the boys in the back. You're wrestling, you're a performer. And you've got to appeal to your audience. I appeal to mine, whether you know it or not. Now, you're just like, Steve, you're the first one to say, fuck the fans. I'm not here for wrestling fans. In case you need reminding. I'm here for wrestlers and wrestling people. Anyway, great job, Tommy Pitts. Do we need to... Ooh, bing! We need to go over that. 
Uh, eight, Ace Haven. Seven, Hold My Beer Hansen. Six, Proc the Croc. Again, this is not a shit the bed moment. I don't think anybody shit the bed. Matt Griffin, James Caleb Kitchens, William Huckabee, Eric Walker, and Tommy Pitts at number one. And that's our list. Whew. So what video am I going to do tomorrow? I guess we'll have to fucking wait and see.